Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So this week I've got a number of padlocks on the workbench and these padlocks were all my father's. And I got a number of locks from him and I remember playing with these locks as a kid and most of these locks had keys in some fashion. Uh, these two guys I'm sure were his. Um, I have keys for these. I don't remember if the keys were originally with them, but I've opened them. In fact, in the past, I've actually used these locks as well. This one, though, um, we never had a key for. I remember this lock back as far as I can uh, remember, and I don't ever remember my father having a key for this lock. But I hung on to it because it's just kind of a cool lock. Uh, and I remember many years ago um, looking up the name of this lock and the number on it for any information online and I always came up dry and I looked again a couple of years ago and found a bunch of information in a lock picking forum and a video um, from Bosnia and Bill which I'll link below as well about these locks and how they work. There's a number of discs inside this lock. Um, I think three discs, yeah I think three discs in total um, that you know you turn in some fashion and I'm not you know, lock picking is kind of interesting to me, but it's never something that I got into as a hobby and learned that much about. So I was never able to open this lock. Um, but based on that information that I found a couple years back, I discovered that the, the way that the keys are made for these locks is actually pretty simple. There is uh, these cylinders or the discs in here, sorry, are turned to uh, either zero degrees from the, the point at which they are rotated as far possible as they will go clockwise, um, 45 degrees back, and then 90 degrees Back. And when I learned that and looked at how the keys were being made for these, I thought, well, heck, I can I can 3D print that. And that's exactly what I did. And this is key number 102. Uh, these locks were sold mainly to the U.S. government and to railroads. And they're known as like a high security lock because the, uh, I guess they're a little harder to pick than, um, well, maybe not harder to pick, but I guess different to pick than more of a standard lock. Um, and the keys were very controlled. You couldn't, as, a, as an individual, you couldn't just purchase a key for, for one of these. And the company, I believe, would not sell you the key unless you had bought the locks like under contract from them or something like that. I, I don't know. Um, but the key is actually really quite simple. Uh, this is, uh, this. if we look at the top here, this one is stamped 02, um, which corresponds with the key one zero two and there's a chart of at least uh, some of the angles for the discs in these keys in that video from Bosnia and Bill. Um, I'll show you still from that later on and again I'm, I'm going to link to that whole video down here if you want to learn more about these. But kind of back to the, the functional print here, uh, I just designed the key uh, to be spaced properly to have um, lobes or, or yeah I guess you call it a lobe on here uh, to turn each one of those discs to the correct number of degrees. And I was worried that this might not work in plastic because, again, I've never opened this lock. I didn't know if it was loose, tight, um, you know, if something was broken off in there. But amazingly, uh, even this key being plastic, and when you turn the key all the way, uh, you don't get any kind of a click. You, you don't get any indication that the lock's open, but she's open. And it's quite a large shackle. I don't know if you can kind of, I don't have a banana for scale. But it's a very beefy lock, and if I just turn the key back now, you can see that that is locked up fast. And again, I'll hold the key close. I'll turn slow. There's actually no indication that the lock is open whatsoever, but it is now open. So let's take a look at, the, at my design file for this, and I'll show you a little bit more information about how these locks are keyed. And... Um, I'll show you that still with some more information uh, about how I knew what angles to cut this key at. Oh, and by the way, so when the lock is open, you can't remove the key. Uh, the way that the, uh, the, the, I guess, outermost disc, or at least one of the discs uh, is turned, it blocks the key from being removed, which I believe is what makes it what's called a high security lock, so that you can't unlock it and leave the key, or sorry, you can't unlock it and leave the key out. If you're in possession of the key, that means that the lock is locked. So let's go take a look at those files. Okay, so here we are in SketchUp, and this is the design for the key. And this is, I think I went through three different iterations until I got it just right, that I had the, the distance um, to the, the discs from the shoulder 
uh, that sits on the outer part of the lock to be just right. And I know that this is key 102, um, so I went ahead and just printed that on the, or, or uh, did a recess there uh, so that I know which key this is as well. I don't know why, because I only own one of these locks, but uh, I don't know. I guess I get cute with my design sometimes, like to kind of just finish it out as much as it would be if I had the real thing. So uh, we look at the, the cuts on this again, and here I'll put the still from Bosnia and Bill's video up on the screen here. And you can see, I know this is 02, which is key 102, and... Um, you know, that's 45 degrees, zero degrees, and 90 degrees. So this plane here, this, I guess, well, yeah, that plane there, that represents zero degrees. And the pinning starts from the bottom. So our first cut is 45 degrees. Our next cut is zero degrees. And then our third cut is 90 degrees. And that's, it's really that simple uh, for making one of these keys. Again, I'll post the, the STL uh, for, uh, for this uh, on my, my page, which is linked in the video description of this video. So it should be pretty easy to modify this for yourself, or you could just draw one of these from scratch uh, pretty quickly. Uh, again, I think it took me three iterations to make this, but not because I needed to adjust the angles or anything like that. It was really just to get the depths of these right. And I might still not be in dead center, um, you know, on these, but they are, uh, you know, within, say, I don't know, they're at least, say, 25% of the way past where each one of my, the, the cuts stop on these. Um, and you, do, you could do it without the shoulder as well, but the shoulder really does a nice job at showing you that you are inserted to the, the correct position. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, maybe you've got one of these locks laying around that you were never able to open as well. Um, my father did work for the railroad many years ago, um, and I presume that that's where he got the lock. Um, I'm guessing that the locks themselves were probably not that closely controlled. Um, it's probably just the keys that were closely controlled. So maybe this was an extra lock. I, I don't know what the story is behind it, but uh, it is very amusing to be able to actually open the lock that I've had in my possession and remember playing with as a kid um, for for so much time. So I haven't actually used it for anything. I'm a little bit nervous that uh, if this thing actually sits outside or gets more use that the key um, might not open it being in plastic, but it would not be difficult to make one of these in brass or some sort of metal as well. In fact, the, the still frame uh, that I showed you with the, the key pinning on these uh, is actually from a, a video of Bosnian Bills where he demonstrates how to make this from a piece of brass. So again, hope you, find, you guys found this useful. Um, if you happen to have one of these locks in a 102, the STL file is linked uh, just as is. We'll open it perfectly. And uh, if you have any thoughts, questions, or comments, feel free to leave them below. I do put up a video every Friday. So if you're not already, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, and uh, you know, tell me what you think below. Uh, your comments, your likes, and subscribes really go a long way in showing me that you guys are interested in this stuff and uh, helping me grow the channel. Thanks guys, take care.